What's the quickest way you've seen someone you and freak up their life? He fell in love with a girl from a wealthy family without knowing she was wealthy. He was financially struggling and was hanging out with rougher and rougher people. He met this girl in a dive bar and a few weeks later stopped hanging out with those rough characters. She helped him get his finances in order and encouraged him to apply for a job at a company her father owned. He wasn't aware. He did well and was put on the fast track for promotion then met her father. After a year they were moved in and 6 months later married. Now he's lives in a nice house, drives a decent car, has a good job that he enjoys and has a happy life. His Phil loves him and he remembers where he came from and helps out his friends who are in rough spots themselves. Beautiful. My husband's sister, former M addict, had a reputation for dating real buttholes, ran away a lot as a kid teenager, was always a mega bee, always getting into trouble, never kept a job for long. When she got pregnant by the latest butthole boyfriend, everyone was like, well, crap. She had recently abandoned a dog at her parents place when it got too difficult to take care of, so we all figured she'd do that with the kiddo eventually. It couldn't have been more wrong. She shaped the frick up, became one of the best moms I know, left the butthole, who turns out wasn't even the real dad, found and married a wonderful man who adopted her son and is the only dad he's ever known, got a really good job, a nice house, and now his two smart, beautiful. Sassy babies who love her more than anything. It couldn't have turned out better for her. A plus turn around. One of my childhood friends had her mom pass away very suddenly when we were 15. Her parents were divorced and her dad had already gone on and made a life with a new woman and didn't give a crap about the kid so my friend was left to live with her stepfather who had been molesting her for years. She ran away and got into alcohol and drugs really bad and then got with a boyfriend who abused her constantly. Her life was a complete train wreck for several years. I'm not sure exactly how they ended up hooking up but she wound up with this guy that we grew up with that she had always crushed on but was too afraid to talk to. He's a great guy from a really good family and really helped her clean her life up and get her crap together. They're married now with a beautiful kid. She became a grief counselor and helps kids and teens cope with the loss of their parents. Wasn't exactly quick, but he still turned his life around. One of my cousins was part of a gang for most of his life. It led to his younger brother being targeted and almost getting his arm hacked off. The guy has a massive scar going down the side of his forearm and has lost most of his strength in it. Anyways he left the gang, went to school, and is now working to get his doctorates, and is also working with youth in the community. What a cool scar to have. I mean, what an inspiring story. Good for him. Probably not the quickest, but pretty quick, and with an intense snowball effect. My uncle's son from his first marriage, technically my step cousin, started an IT company after he dropped out of a very expensive, private college in 2012. He was something close to six figures in debt and said frick it, started a business. Sold that company to a much larger company in 2015 for 38 million dollars. After taxes and accounting fees and all the payouts to minority shareholders, he was left with around 22 million dollars. He took the money and created a very similar, but more technologically advanced company in a part of the world where the service was underperformed. Sold that second company just a couple weeks ago for 14 million dollars. Started a third, basically identical company in another part of the world and it didn't take off exactly as well. So he stopped. Now, he bought a cozy house in West Los Angeles for a couple million. Has a 4 car garage with nothing less than $100,000 allowed inside. And works on his novels movie scripts all day. He has money invested in so many different places that he has a steady stream of about $60,000 coming in every month to frick around with. He made his money, is very, very smart with it and lives it up because he understands you can't take it with you. So might as well live lavish. Many 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 years ago the mother of my godson gave birth when she had recently turned 17. Her single parent mother kicked her out and abandoned her. They have not seen each other or spoken since. The kid's father buggered off early into the pregnancy to frick up the lives of other girls. I had gotten her a place to stay and helped out when I could. It's kinda how we properly met at school as I noticed all the crap she was going through. She went back to school, got into a decent university, passed her law degree, passed the bar, 
became a decent badass commercial lawyer, became an outstanding mother, bought up a well-adjusted and rounded kid albeit a lovable smartass, got him through his own university, and is now subtly helping to plan the boys and his fiancé's wedding. She is a rock star. Eight months ago I had no license, no car, nowhere to live, was bouncing around at friends' houses. My only goal was to get high on anything, anywhere, anytime. My drug use had landed me in the hospital more than once, and had just violated my probation and decided to spend the last of my money on a plane ticket to California. I ended up getting talked out of it by my sister at the last minute, while I was at the airport mind you. I decided to face my probation officer and not become a fugitive. She gave me the choice between rehab or jail. Went to rehab completely changed my mentality. I now have a job making awesome money, my own car, and just signed a lease agreement for a house I'm moving into this weekend. Also will be successfully discharged from probation next month, and can get my case expunged in 3 years. Good freaking job. My brother took a year off after high school. Both of us were in the gifted programs in elementary middle school, but neither one of us did that well in high school, so I figured by taking a year off, he was screwed. He spent a year without a job, or a girlfriend, or taking classes, or doing anything really besides playing video games and sleeping until 2pm. I was sure he was going to be living with my mom until she died. Then he shocked me by going to college the next year and absolutely freaking crushing it. Constantly on the dean's list. Started writing music. Released a demo. Joined an a cappella group. Got nominated for a few awards. Including one for best solo and he just got accepted into a doctoral program. A good friend of mine was a heavy drinker. His fiance left him and he fell apart. Every weekend would drink and drink, throw big parties and just slowly go broke because of his drinking. One night decided to drink and drive with his brother in the car. They were driving very fast when he lost control and spun the car out. Wrecked the car. Both ended up getting out of the accident without any terrible injuries. Got arrested and after all the fines and crap were taken care of he stopped drinking. He now is engaged with someone else, after years of being single and working on his life. Makes more money, doesn't get behind the wheel when he drinks. He only socially drinks now and when he starts to get tipsy he stops drinking. And has become one of the most motivational people I know because of it. In middle school, she rejected her community and embraced the internet. Living in her room glued to her computer. That probably saved her from becoming another drug addict working minimum wage in her crappy town with no resources or future. Gaming become her drug instead, and that led her into realizing her town had no future and she needed to get out. Ironically becoming an internet addicted shut and unfricked up her life since she made friends on the internet with education and life experiences who coached her through college app process and how to get out of bumfuck nowhere. So she learned about sats, got into college, applied for scholarships and now lives in a city with a better job and a better life. Still addicted to games though. Kinda similar to me, except from early childhood up, 6-7-Y-O. I was always a nerd and introvert, always just on my computer, or my mom's computer at the time. I grew up in the type of area where you're either a nerd or you're drunk. So I guess I'm lucky to be who I am now, D. But then again, my entire family is nerds so chances of me becoming one too was big. Good friend woke up one day and decided to stop externalizing all his problems and admit he was a problem. In one week, P. Sold his TV and console. Quit smoking pot. Enrolled in community college. Sold his gaming PC and bought a cheap laptop. Started seeing a therapist. Broke up with his high maintenance GF. Quit drinking. Started running. Quit eating sugar. Cut off all contact with his awful mother and sister. That was an amazing transformation. Almost 5 years later now, and he still has ups and downs, but is so much happier. Whoa, good for him. Friend took the international baccalaureate for his high school qualifications, instead of the government mandated curriculum. This is an option at my school. Anyway, he failed and didn't get enough credits for university entrance. So he just went and talked to the admissions department, told them he did IB, they let him in without even checking hours grades. He went on to study a master's degree. I only got my IB certificate as well. I also didn't finish school but have a bus ton of experience in my field and no debt, 
So. My next door neighbor won $70,000 in the lottery, completely turned her life around. She could get all the repairs done to her house and took her son with Down syndrome to Disneyland, his biggest dream. It usually only takes the first week of a basic training. You'll unlearn a lot of bad habits in a hurry in a situation like that. I saw a lot of kids that had no chance at a productive life. Go through BMT and come out the other side completely changed. I'm fairly proud of my own turnaround. At age 23 I was a failed actor working a minimum wage job. Living in a crap hole that was basically a squat I paid for and taking as many class A drugs as I could get my hands on. By 25 I'd got myself a master's degree, been traveling and moved to London where I've been working ever since. Next door neighbor when I was growing up kind of went off the rails in high school. Got a bad reputation, transferred high schools, still didn't graduate, turned into a crack W. Got pregnant with a dealer's baby, dealer went to prison for something or another, she continued being a crack W. Abandoned the baby, got pregnant again. You get the idea. Basically, the life of a screwed up crack W. Then I think she finally went to rehab. She met a woman that she fell in love with, got back custody of the two kids, and with her fiancé supporting her, she went back to school. She might be done now, but she was getting her degree in social work, so that she could help people who were going or down the same path she had been on. It was a complete 180. As far as I know, she hasn't had any relapses. I think her fiancé, or my wife, I don't see her too often, has really been great helping her stay on track and that she sees that she can help other people has been a huge driver for her. Illusory inferiority. My friend was a former know-it-all who embraced curiosity to get ahead. Now he's feigning ignorance and asking questions of managers and members of his work teams. Now that's he giving everyone the chance to enjoy a teachable moment at his expense, they are putting in a good word for him. His performance reviews are off the charts. That Canadian couple that won the lottery 3x. Two smaller wins and then something akin to 8.1 million dollars Canadian dollars. Holy crap that's like 372 dollars in real money. Same guy unfucked himself in spectacular fashion three times in a row. My friend was a total wannabe gangster in high school. Selling drugs. Fighting with weapons. Smoking M. Stealing cars. He dressed so thuggish that it would just attract trouble wherever we went. Case in point. He got sucker punched out of the blue at a freaking aquarium. His hooded butt mom. Very attractive. Though. Suddenly marries a really smart. Nice guy who didn't have any money but had gone to Yale. He took my friend to Yale when they were on a vacation just to show him around. My friend is completely struck by the beauty and grandeur of the place. Decides he's going to go to an Ivy League school. Aces high school from the second semester of his junior year on and gets an SAT score that got him into a good state university. Gets accepted to Harvard after his first year. Graduates. Goes to Ivy League PhD program for public health. Finishes in 3.5 freaking years, then proceeds to destroy himself with pain pills as soon as he's granted an awesome job in biotech industry. Then he goes to rehab, gets clean, gets a sales job at that same company, and breaks every sales record they had by a country mile. Within 2 years founds his own consulting firm that organizes sales teams and blows it when he discovers H. Loses his company, then goes back to sell biotech stuff for another company while still on H. Sells spectacularly well and switches to Suboxone. No idea how this story ends. He did just get married. His wife is a really, really hot woman from Japan. <laughs> Sounds like he's still carrying that gangster inside of him and fear of what he used to be is making him be a super achiever. Unfortunately working super hard also leads him to play super hard. Someone needs to tell him with such strong will he needs to learn to moderate himself or he'll burn himself out. The relative paucity of answers in this thread compared to the opposite one demonstrates how much easier and faster it is to freak up than fix things. This is a good observation, actually. A friend from college landed a very fine job as an administrator with a successful business firm. He got married shortly after graduating and his wife became pregnant with their first child. Things were going great until his casino gambling addiction consumed him, and his paychecks. It was terrible. They were about to lose their home and his employment was suffering. As a result, his wife, 
also a friend of mine, called and asked if I'd go with him and try to be a good influence to get him to stop if things weren't going well with his luck, which they rarely did. It was like trying to reason with the dining room table. When their son was born, I said to him, you need to be reborn in your thinking. 2. Will you support your family or the casino? To his credit, that question got through to him. He chose his son and his wife and hasn't been back since. We believe he never will again. He's like a new person. Freed from the bonds of addiction. A Y Y Y Y Y. It's the music teacher. From that one thread I can't remember. Dude I know about named Gilbert got out of prison with his family. They used to be wealthy as frick and live in a mansion before imprisonment. National revolution suck. They were broke. Struggling. And pretty much hated by everyone in their country at least. Then Gil slipped and broke his leg. He was basically out of commission and his farm wasn't bringing in many profits. Thankfully, Gilbert served in the military and had some kind of thank you money which he'd never used. His wife and daughter used that money to get a head start and then went around and bargained with anyone they could to finally get their profits back up to about 500,000 per year. They lived in relative happiness after that until unfortunately the wife died of lead poisoning. Prison conditions suck. My life went from living in my car and on drugs. Met my now husband who told me about a rehab for veterans. Got pregnant. Married. Went to college. After a year being clean. Almost done with my masters and teaching credential. Just celebrated 12 years off of drugs. Not quick, but unfuck nonetheless. Whoa, congratulations. Mine. I lived in a terrible little apartment in the UK, in a rough part of town. With my children and husband. The local schools were bad. Prospects were low for anyone in the area. Then my in-laws paid for us to emigrate to Australia. We now have a beautiful house in the kind of town people come to for their holidays. I have a great job and my husband does too. He only needs to work 3 days per week and we're still paying school fees and living well. Thanks in-laws. I love you. I had been working in a dead end job for 2 years. There were talks of closing the shop down and redundancies. I applied to go back to university in September 2015. By October 2015 I had been made redundant and by January 2016 I had my dream job in the field was I studying and the company have taken over paying for the degree course. Can I say me? When I was 7 years old I promised myself I would kill myself on my 21st birthday. So when I was 20 I did everything I wanted. I was working a crappy job at Panera and someone there told me about parties he goes to and he invited me. I started going and I started drinking. Eventually I found more parties and I started smoking. I began to hook up with as many girls as I could. Then during I found my first FWB. We hooked up, always without a condom and she got pregnant. The day I found out she was pregnant I was still confident I was going kill myself so I didn't really give a crap. That day I went to the local uni and I hooked up with a girl at a party. My FWB aborts my kid without letting me know and she has me jumped. It gets worse. I go into a daze of being drunk or high. I move out into a less than desirable house. My roommate smoke and do drugs. My 21st birthday comes up. I have a noose ready. I go out to a party and drink a bit but I don't get drunk. I go home and I just fall asleep. The next day I trip acid. I stayed up all night listening to the album There Is Only Now by Souls of Mischief. It blows my mind. Because of that song I start getting my crap together. Within a week I get a second job that isn't complete crap. I apply to college and I make a 401k. I decide to start working with disabled people. I eventually get a job with them. I leave my crap job and I keep the good ones. I get a job with the disabled closer. I start there and around that time I start seriously dating this girl. I'm happy. Dating a girl I truly care about. Working two jobs I love. Six months into dating my now girlfriend I've never been happier. She supports me. Something I've never had. I just got a job working with disabled people at a local rehab center halfway house and I'll be hosting meetings there to help the people. I don't drink nearly as much as I did. My girlfriend is happy for me. I'm happy for me. I'm also moving out of my house next week. I went down a very scary road. A lot of the people that I spend time with went further down and now are addicted to MRH. I'm going to try to help them. I need to help them.
Grats, that's amazing. TL, DR, M is a hell of a drug, near death experience and turnaround, blue collar guy, divorced but great relationship with his kids, gets into M, mum doesn't let kids come around him for 5 years, kids scared of him since they don't know what's going on other than it's not safe to be at dad's house, so you can't go, loses his family, his house, all his money, vehicles, everything. One druggie even murdered another druggie in his house right in front of him before he lost it. Falls off a 70 foot tall bridge in the middle of the night. Lands on riverbank. Almost dies. Back broken in 3 places. Neck broken in 2 places. Ribs broken. Entire right side of body paralyzed. Lays under bridge 3 days until he can drag himself up the embankment to the road and eventually gets taken to the IQ. Mom brings the kids to see him. Thinking he's probably going to die. He survives and mom allows him to move in with them since he has nowhere else to go on condition of staying clean. No visitors. Etc. He stops cold turkey realizing all that he lost and more that he almost lost. Regains most function in right side of body over time. Builds pretty successful mechanic business. Rebuilds awesome relationship with kids. In the process of buying a house now. Old friend came from a messed up family. At some point in high school. She dropped off the face of the planet. She resurfaced several years later and admitted she'd been homeless. Using hard drugs. And having sex for money. She got a ged. Went to college and graduated about 3 years behind schedule. She recently got married and is thinking about grad school. Don't wanna toot my own horn but I feel like I unfricked up my life pretty decently. I was in a really crappy place in life. Depressed and suicidal and addicted etc. Throughout my late high school years and it got to the stage where some of my best and closest friends told me that enough was enough and they were going to walk out of my life because they couldn't deal with the path to self destruction I was on. It got really heated because I had also fricked them over but that's a story for another day. When they told me they wanted nothing to do with me it was a huge wake up call. Probably the biggest I have experienced as of yet. It dawned on me how far gone I was. Anyway. I basically made it my life goal to get out of the mentality I was in at that point and give up everything fueling my addictions. A year later, I had a good job and was studying the college degree I wanted to. Everything seemed to fall into place. Of course things aren't perfect but I unfricked up my life a lot. TL. DR. I was depressed, suicidal and addicted as a high school student and after a wake up call I managed to somewhat turn my life around. You're pretty dang awesome for that dude. Can't have been easy but you are just so much stronger for having gone through that. Well done. Took about a week. I'm currently a sophomore in high school. I have the ability to get all A's with mediocre effort. But haven't since about 4th grade. Due mostly to the part where I also have the ability to be doing homework and find myself 3 chapters deep in a book that I didn't know I owned. Or 15 links into a wikipedia rabbit hole that was sparked by me looking up something related to a question I had. Without ever knowing what happened in the interceding time. As of the 23rd of March or so I had 3 D's. 1 C. 1 B. And 3 is because of classes that I couldn't fail if I literally showed up and took a nap every class period. I spent an app period one day, asking each of my teachers what, if any, assignments do I have not turned in or that are correctable, that I can still do for credit, took each of their answers and wrote it down on a page of a notebook. On the next page, I then ranked them from easiest to hardest to complete. I then took every third assignment, 1, 4, 7, 10, etc, and wrote it on the next page starting down the top. Next came to 5, 8, etc, and finally 3, 6, 9, etc. I then took them and rearranged them slightly so as to not have a giant block of one class in a row, and I had a properly sorted checklist. Now after each assignment title I drew 3 boxes, each column labeled materials, done, or turned in. When I had the chance I went and gathered all materials I needed. I carried my bag around everywhere for the next week. Doing backlog assignments at any free time. On the first night I worked straight through the night. And found out that that was a bad idea. The next three I simply skimped on sleep. In that week. I finished 70% of the things I had been assigned over the last six. Plus all from that week. 
I thought I was gonna die, but obviously made it through. I understand that this wasn't exactly life saving, but it did drastically improve the quality of the choices I have for university. I don't yet have all those, but I'm well on my way to it before the end of the semester comes. TL. DR. I am an idiot who doesn't finish much of my school work. I spent a week doing literally nothing but, and have drastically improved my life because of it. This kid was just a walking stereotype, he was literally the most pikey pikey that ever pickied. Note, a pikey is a gypsy, and not the fortune telling bohemian madams are only ones at that. He got expelled from school for waving a loaded air pistol at us, and he was already going to court for stealing a car. TBF the burk who owned the car left the keys in the sodding door. What else was going to happen? He gets expelled but avoids being charged as an adult because his family was abusive and gypsies are a protected species, so he gets fostered for a while and removes himself from his old friends, myself included. One day he buys an old jeep from an army surplus store, he does it up, and sells it for a tidy profit, then he does it again, and again. He's now 22 and makes a nice pile of money from renovating old agricultural and utility vehicles. Last I heard he was applying to be registered as an officially recognized trader and renovator of Land Rovers and tractors. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.